Ozark University. It, it would, it does sound like their mascot would be like a peacock or some kind of bird. Ozark University, go Cox. Move out of the way, South Carolina. There's a new cock in town. We have 60 overall Cox. 60 yeah, overall Cox. <laughs> we have some four foot five <laughs> Cox, some five foot two Cox, <laughs> 350 pound Cox. <laughs> oh, did you forget? You forgot the backup cock. Oh, the, the backup, backup cock. You don't cock. see it coming. It's the biggest on the team. Jesus. I don't think you can use any of that. Uh, go Cox. Uh, we'll just leave it at that. Ozark University. We're trash. For right now. It's the place to be. Welcome one and all to the Ozark State Outlaws Dynasty. Featuring, of course, Ozark State University and... The Outlaws, and of course, a very familiar face for many of you guys who watch some of the other series on this channel. Bengus Khan returns as the head coach to lead this newfound Ozark team to glory. It is Dynasty Mode, not Road to Glory, but finally NCAA 14 makes its return on the channel. Hope you guys enjoyed that intro and maybe some words from my friends, either before or after this moment. You guys will see what I'm talking about if you haven't already. But Bengus Khan. Signs a four-year deal to become the new head coach of the Ozark State Outlaws playing at Dual Field. For this Team Builder Dynasty, I am beyond excited. It took me forever because the Team Builder site is down. EA, will you please fix it? Decided to find an actual Outlaws team. And this is the one we're using, Ozark State. Get used to it. Now that the scene has been set, let's meet your Ozark State Outlaws roster. It is headlined by a couple of players. Most notably, the special teamers. We got Joe Bauer out of Cutler Ridge, Florida, a senior 73 overall kicker. And Brooks Weeks, another senior punter out of Webster Groves, Missouri, close to the Ozarks. Going through here, we're headlined by starter, quarterback, Pedro Goddard, a sophomore out of Alabama, 6'2", scrambling type. He has 82 speed, as most of the quarterbacks on this roster actually have fantastic speed, but what they have in speed they lack in actual throwing ability. Decent throw power from the starter, Pedro Goddard with 84. Ralph Hale, the freshman out of Alabama, with decent throw power as well. But Kedrick Cunningham and Jason Perry both lack any type of arm whatsoever, including accuracy, as even our top two options do as well. Halfbacks, we have Darren Maxwell out of Carrollton, Georgia. He's a junior, 5'10", almost 200 pounds with good speed. Backed up by Riley Cody, a freshman also out of Carrollton, Georgia, who will get some touches. And then Terrence Lawrence, a junior running back out of Boca Del Mar, Florida. We do not have a lot of good running back depth, but at wide receiver, after a fullback, Trey Huggins, a senior, not too much going on there. We have Karan Kirkpatrick, one of the stars of this team. Decent speed for him, as well as Roland Francisco, the freshman out of Tucker, Georgia. 89 speed is some of the only speed on this lineup. 80 speed for Ryan Muller, wide receiver three. Rob Gaither, another freshman out of Jupiter, Florida, 85, and then 81, 78, 79, and 82 speed, respectively, for the rest of the receiving core. At tight end, we got a good one. Jake Rodriguez, the six foot six red shirt freshman out of Doraville, Georgia, has got some good speed. One of the highest overall players on this entire team, and he's decent with the ball after the catch. Good catch in traffic, two at an 80, good jumping at an 85, but he is one of the only options we can really go to uh, through the air as at tight end Quincy Rust is not very good another player out of Doraville Georgia and then Gabriel Timmons out of Powder Springs doesn't bring much to the table either at just a 65 overall as a junior the offensive line is atrocious but your starters are Jack Ham at left tackle this could even go to Dominic Hand or Josiah Howard of course you'll remember Jack Ham with the Pittsburgh Steelers linebacker Hall of Famer this is a left tackle not quite as good Left guard, Jeff McGrew, 68 overall, freshman out of Ken Carroll, Colorado. Max Birch, the starting center at 69 overall, a junior out of Fort Stewart, Georgia. And then the right guard, Lawrence Frederick, starter, junior, Adamsville, Alabama is his hometown. And then at right tackle, rounding out the offensive line is Jabari Siegel out of Hollywood, Florida. We got a Hollywood Jabari Siegel, a sophomore, not very talented, but he does have decent acceleration to go with his 81 strength. And then at left end, one of the best players on this entire team, Ron Wilkerson, the junior out of Selmont, Alabama, run stopper type. 
And of course, the freshman. Another red shirt, but Deontay McKeon. 70 overall as a freshman out of Selmont, Alabama. We talked about that a little bit. Um, again, Ron Wilkerson. Seems like most of the players from this auto-generated lineup are from the same town for the top two, even top three positions sometimes with Gerard Davenport, a senior. But Deontay McKeon looks like he could be a very good player with 81 speed, 80 strength. He's not quite ready to start just yet. We'll try to get him some touches. He's a good option as a redshirt freshman. And then the senior, Brian Mullins out of Huntington, Indiana. Six foot two, 246 pounds with Sandoval Slaughter. Backing him up, another player out of Huntington, Indiana. 6'3", 260 for the true freshman. Might want to redshirt him. We're going to make some of these decisions here in this episode, but I want to show you guys the roster a little bit first. The defensive tackles are worse. No one in the 70s, but we got Simeon Petty out of Delaware. Daryl Bradford out of Alabama. He's another true freshman that will start on the defensive line more than likely. Colt Nash, redshirt freshman, actually out of Ozark, Alabama. Decent player, 81 speed for him, 6'5", decent option. Clinton McKeon, brother of the defensive lineman playing left end for us in Deontay McKeon. They came here together in different years. Also got Tavarius Skinner out of Oxford, Alabama. Middle linebackers, we have the senior, Montrell Gardner, and I know what you're thinking. I've never seen someone that looks more like a Montrell in my life, and you'd be absolutely correct. We also have Jeff Fisher. No, not the former... 8-8 eight eight perennial coach for the St. Louis Rams at the time and then the Tennessee Titans. This is a different Jeff Fisher. He spells it like Jeffrey Giraffe, the Toys R Us Giraffe. And they, they went out of business, I guess. But they're coming back, I hear. I heard today they're coming back as like a toy bucket or something fun. I don't know. Dante Jean out of Phoenix City, Alabama, the junior linebacker with good speed for him. He will likely start next year when Montreal Gardner steps down. We're in a 4-3 right now, so I guess he's not number one on the depth chart, but he will be rotated in quite often with good athleticism. And of course, we got Lightning McQueen. Rory McQueen, the redshirt junior out of Adamsville, Alabama. 84 speed, 6 foot one. He's decent, very good athletically. And of course, LaRue Schaefer, another redshirt freshman backing him up. At cornerback, we've got an interesting group of players. There is a Mark Fenner, redshirt senior out of Albany, Georgia. Jonathan Baker, a redshirt senior out of Oakland Park, Florida. So we are losing our top two cornerback options out of this year. But there is a player for the Ozark Outlaws. Chris Outlaw. Totally generated name. Uh, just very coincidental. He's a sophomore out of Guntersville, Alabama. 91 speed. The fastest player on our entire team, I believe, but he's not very strong. He doesn't do a lot of things well, but he is very good athletically. We also have Byron Fulton. Junior out of Georgia, hard-hitting cornerback, another hard hitter, and Nick Larson. As uh, we have players on our team that don't believe in the letter K, apparently, in Mark Fenner. And now Nick Larson. Got Devin Robeson out of Oakland Park, Florida. He's a redshirt freshman. We'll see if he gets some reps next year, and he most likely will. He'll get in a little bit this year. And then Freddie Stovall out of Oakland Park, Florida. Again, another one. Redshirt freshman. They came here together. Did uh, Devin Robinson, or Robeson, and Fredley Stovall. Fredley. He might change his name to Fredley. Who knows? Jarvis Blankenship is the starting free safety out of Armory, or Amory, Missouri. Excuse me. He is a junior. And we have Randall Barron out of Tuskegee, Alabama, backing him up. Nothing too good here in the secondary, except for one of the best players on our team, the senior hard-hitting safety Antoine Watts. We'll start on the strong side. Decent speed at 85. The fastest player in our secondary that's going to be starting, I believe, uh, at least at the safety. I don't think there was a faster cornerback, but there may have been. There may have been just a little bit faster. 86, 87. So he's just uh, one tick off um, the second fastest in the entire secondary. Um, two ticks off the fastest. Then we have uh, Tariq Parrish, senior. We're going to lose him after this year. And the freshman, Ernest Harmon, will probably have to step into the job. And, of course, you guys have met the kicker, Joe Bower, and the puncher, Brooks Weeks. But that is the entire roster you can predict the starters, but let's go ahead and take the next step. Now, a huge staple of NCAA 14, of course, is recruiting. Since we're not a very good team, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the Ozark State Outlaws. Trust me, you will. We're not going to be creating any prospects. We're going to skip straight to recruiting, and we'll see what type of players we might be able to lure. Because I, I won't even say what players we'll be able to bring in, because... We're really luring them 
to our location here in the Ozarks. No one <laughs> wants to come here. And we have to trick them. We got to do maybe a little Bill Cosby action, a little bit of, you know, a little bit of things here and there that maybe is not so great. More like, you know, from a moral standpoint. But we're going to get the job done. So I am a bit of a recruiting novice. I'm not sure if you can tell. Because I have not fully played an NCAA Dynasty since probably 2015. So it's been a little while for me now sitting here. Uh, about to be 2019. Only two months away. Do we want to redshirt anybody? That's an interesting question. We're not going to be that great this year. I'll show you guys the schedule in a second. We're not going to focus on, on redshirting any senior. But there are some high overall freshmen that we might want to redshirt. Uh, Sandoval Slaughter is going to be one of them. We're going to we're gonna play Roland Francisco. Rob Gaither is going to be redshirt. Or redshirted. Redshirt? Red, we're going to slap the redshirt on him either way. Ralph Hale, we're going to redshirt. And then... Daryl Bradford will start next year. We'll redshirt him as well. So those are our four redshirt players this year. Daryl Bradford, Ralph Hale, Rob Gaither, and Sandoval Slaughter. Two defensive linemen and two offensive players up near the 70s. They could be very decent players for us next year. But we are ready to start the season. The Ozark State Outlaws are ready for their inaugural season here in technically uh, 2018. But in the game, it's 2013. Could be interesting. 5,000 recruiting points. Let's go ahead and check out our recruiting board. B-O-A-R-D. Even though these players that we're looking to uh, lure to our school are probably B-O-R-E-D. Is that bad enough of a joke for you guys? I think you guys will enjoy it. Quality. Matt Gibson. Let's focus on our positions of need, which is everywhere. I think we've got a decent quarterback. We've got none on our board, so we're kind of fine there. Halfback, we're all right. The offensive line is really tough. It's not a sexy position, but it's it's a position that we need. We're going to put 100 points, maybe 200 points, in a Quentin Carter. 68 overall tackle. And then Chris Brown. Hopefully he treats the defensive lineman like Rihanna. And I don't think we're going to have a problem. Where are the athletes? Three athletes. We got to go all in on him. We're also going to offer a scholarship. Because Greg Fox foul. Falcon, Falcon Punch. I don't know how to say that. Fa Falkies, the Atlanta Falkies, and of course, I really want to focus on Pete Riley. Slippery Pete, let's get him. Where do we take away points? I haven't gotten in a cornerback at all. Might have to be something for next week. We've done recruiting in an interesting way. If you guys have any tips. Or any tips for the Dynasty as a whole of what you might want to see. Make sure to leave that down in the comment section below. Like the video if that's your sort of thing. And um, yeah, I think this is going to be a really fun Dynasty. Let's go ahead and advance the week. Bend over and prepare for the beatdown that is probably coming by Alabama and Nick Saban. Okay, Nick Satan. He's the devil to us. Did Alaba Alabama lost their opening game? What are you doing, Bama? They're 0-1? And, and they think they can they can beat the Outlaws now? Oh, we're going to march in to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And we're going to roll through Bryant-Denny Stadium. The Crimson Tide are not going to see what's coming. We're the Outlaws. Coming in, literally guns blazing. We're going in a kicker. We're offering Pete Riley a scholarship. We're falling behind a little bit, but that's all right. You guys will give me some advice, and then we're going to be moving in the right direction. This is going to be, hopefully, a very user-driven series, so make sure to get very active in that comment section and let me know what's what. Here's the game preview versus Alabama. Kirk Herbstreet's picking Bama. You know, we haven't, we're, we haven't played a game, so I get that we're unproven, and our overall might be a D. Our offense and defense might be a D, but we're going to give the D here today. I don't care about Alabama being an A overall. B-plus offense, A-plus defense. They only score 24 points a game. We're going to smash them. It's not even going to be close. So, <sighs> there is a bit of an overall difference. I'm not going to say there's not. It's literally about to go off the scale there in favor of Alabama. 
as I've backed out. It's, it's, I accidentally hit my controller. It's a sign. So the tail of the tape is a bit like, I don't know, Conor McGregor versus me. Of course, Ozark State being Conor McGregor. Let's go out and get it. I know Conor just lost to Habib Nurmagomedov, but don't worry about all that. We're gonna go ahead and choose heads. And we even lose the coin toss. But you know what? Bold prediction. That's going to be the only thing we lose here today. Alabama's not going to see what hit him. Norman is back to return. Not exactly a fast player is Ron Norman. But there's Bengis Khan coaching his first game for Ozark State. And let me tell you, it's going to go well. Handoff's going to go to Maxwell. And he's actually got some room. Five-yard pickup by Darren Maxwell. And these outlaw jerseys are looking crisp under the Alabama sun. Handoff goes back to Maxwell. He's wrapped up there by the defensive line. I will say that this is the 2016 rosters for a reason. That's Reuben Foster. I want to see some of these players that we now see in the NFL. I think it's cool to rewind a couple years to see, you know, Baker Mayfield. To see Reuben Foster. I think it's cool. We'll get to some of these recent players uh, that are playing nowadays, but I think it's cool to kind of rewind the tape a little bit as it is third down and five. We're going to pick up the first down. It's Townsend. Demarcus Townsend for a 10-yard pickup on third down. And Alabama, they have no answer. Always love not knowing what buttons my players are when we're on the road. I struggle enough to play this game. As we're going to find A underneath. It's nearly intercepted by Eddie Jackson. The current Chicago Bear. And it brings up third and 12. The Ozark State offense is one for one on third downs today. See if we can pick it up here on third and 12. Blitz is coming in. Nobody's open. And that one is going to end up in a punt. Pedro Goddard incomplete over the middle. Not a great punt from Weeks. You could say it was kind of weak, but Lightning McQueen as uh, Robert Foster on the return. I think I screwed up the joke. I said wheat. The joke, it wasn't wheat. Like, this is not like hops and and things like that. It's a uh, weak was the joke. It's another run to Bo Scarborough. A little more than two yards. Is he going to be wrestled down in this next level of the defense? Okay. It kind of opened up there like, like Moses parting the, what is it, the Red Sea? I'm not really a Bible man. I think something like that. A little motion going on in the backfield for Jalen Hurts. And we're going to try to cover somebody. There's the running back. It's actually the tight end in the backfield. O.J. Howard picks up seven yards for this Crimson Tide offense. And we're going to have to cover that. If, we're gonna, if we want to win, it's going to start with not allowing points. I think if we score more points, we're going to have a pretty good chance to win. Come on, Gardner. Are you, are you out of your mind? You can't just run out of bounds to avoid the defender, then come back in. What are you, crazy? Big third down. Trying to use her. Jalen Hurts going to take off, but he's sacked in the backfield. Look at the pressure from Ron Wilkerson. Stopping what would certainly be a first down by Alabama. Let's go. Defense showing up. Wilkerson, the senior, making plays in his final year. Here is the attempt. Jason Bateman, the holder. Shout out to Ozark, the TV show. And the kick is good as uh, Temple is upset. Houston. Interesting. We're down here early to Alabama, but we have more heart than they do. All right, we're coming back. Dude, Norman might be the slowest player I've used in any game ever. L like, he is so slow. Snail simulator is faster than I can't even remember his name maybe I'm slow now whoever that was Ron Parker Ron Jeremy it doesn't matter who it was dude he was way too slow as we're gonna run the ball cut it to the outside give me a block I need a block 76 I don't think so it's zone coverage looking for an option and uh okay and you played quarterback was it That's not where I had that at all. That's not where that punt was supposed to go. What are you doing? There's McQueen. Oh, he's very slow. Very slow comparatively to Scarborough. 
Another first down. All right, can we stop this Alabama offense? Please. Jalen Hurts going to break away. Stay on his feet. Seven yards. And this defense is going to have to step up on the goal line. We got Lightning McQueen. I have no idea what his first name actually is. We got Montrell Gardner. That's not even a joke. Handoff again goes to Scarborough. It's wide open. Nice zero-yard touchdown run for him. And Alabama likely will go ahead 10-0 here in the first quarter. We're going to leave Norman here. I guess, what, Ron Norman was his name, not Ron Parker. Ron Parker's the safety for the Chiefs. But uh, Ron Norman, I've had about enough of you returning anything. Even returning, like, I don't know, a, a, a piece of clothing to Macy's or wherever you go. Maybe you don't shop at Macy's, but here's Goddard on the read option. Maybe our longest run of the game. 10 yards for Pedro Goddard. But I'm done with uh, Ron Norman. I, I almost forgot his name again. Another first down opportunity. We're going to go check down to the flat. Look at Maxwell. The spin. Maybe picked up 10 yards again. Darren Maxwell. Proving to be a weapon out of the backfield. And this, this offense is not too bad. Who do we even go to here? We've yet to really figure out our main targets that we can go to on you know downs like these and that was not the way uh, that, was, that was not the way i'm getting pressured from this alabama defensive line i'm just running backwards probably best to throw it away there as we already know we have no punter he's the highest overall on our, uh, bleh, highest overall on our team he's pretty bad can somebody tackle oh my god no 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 schaefer bring him down thank you play underneath that's going to give you a shot to the end zone. Our Darius Stewart can't keep a foot in bounds. I'm not going to say that was great coverage, but that was amazing coverage. As you know what, we're going to give Ron Norman a chance. Please return this pass to 20. I am on the turbo. He is ungodly slow, but he breaks one. Ron Norman all the way to the 22. Unbelievable. Give me a read option. Please go, Pedro. As far as the Heisman goes, I'm not voting for Pedro on that one. I'm just not doing it. I can't. You got to show me something more. I'm used to the rocket arm of Kyle Lalletta. If you guys watch Giants franchise on this channel. As we're going to go to the tight end here. Gabriel Timmons can't hold on. We had two routes basically in the same spot. I didn't really realize. And this offense hasn't got going quite yet. But, you know, trust me. We're a second half team. Or... First half, I'm it's, I'm calling it. It's over. In the second half, we're coming out here. As we got Outlaw on punt coverage this time. Finally bring down Robert Foster. All right, so Alabama is not dominating us, per se. 106 total yards to 30. We have negative 13 yards in the second quarter. But that's just, that's just numbers. Who cares about those? We care about performance, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. All right? Trust me. Here's another handoff to Scarborough. Okay. He kind of threw one off that time. I'm not ready to say that he's good. And sure, Alabama's up early. There's a lot of time left. It's only going to be 20 to nothing. We will get on the board. That I can promise you. Well, okay, I can't promise you, but we're going to try. And picking it up, Townsend holds on. Demarcus Townsend, he has like 16 receiving yards today, so he's just I mean, wow, okay. How, how cool is that, all right? Look at me with a, a fantastic guess of 16. Timestamp with that one and show your friends. We're going to roll out with Goddard. He's actually got some pretty good speed. We're going to throw on the run to Kirkpatrick. And Karan Kirkpatrick picks us up the first down. Number one on the field. Number one in your heart. As a, pretty much the same could be said for our quarterback, Pedro Gard Goddard, wearing number 12. Pedro's more of a, he's not really a passing quarterback, but I wouldn't go as far to say he's a running quarterback either. He's kind of just on the field. He's an on the field quarterback. He's there. He shows up to the games in at least one way. All right, second and nine. I don't really like anything here. We're going to throw it to Roland Francisco. Did I not redshirt you? All right, they're not blitzing him, but the slant over the middle is wide open for Sharp. Gerard Sharp, 12 yards. Look for something to get open. We got B. There it is, wide open. It's Karan Kirkpatrick again. Exposing the Alabama defense with back-to-back -back catches. 
I'm not exactly sure if that's true either, but he has a catch on this drive. Pedro Goddard putting on a clinic. Take notes, Jalen Hurts. You suck. Dude, I'm, I'm looking for a sharp quickly. Oh, I didn't really like that, but we got the tight end. It's Timmons into the end zone. Gabriel Timmons, 18 yards and a touchdown. We are officially on the board against Bama. Bring on Bama, we would say, because they're number 12 now. Who cares? It's nothing. They're almost like a non-ranked opponent. Bring on Oklahoma. They're on the schedule. As Tennessee takes back the lead against Western Kentucky, the Hilltoppers have an uphill battle, you could say. Surely we can stop Alabama from scoring here. I say surely. They don't actually have that far to go. And with 59 seconds, three timeouts, we have no speed. Lightning McQueen, honestly, not that fast. And that is, that is open a little bit. I think it was in man coverage, and nobody was on O.J. Howard, so I picked that one up, but Garrick Dieter has a touchdown. Alabama has scored in 30 seconds. We have 26 seconds. It all starts with a kickoff return touchdown from Ron Norman. Okay, maybe not. Is that your name? It might be. Oh, we have one-on-one. -on -one. That's not exactly great arm strength that's picked off by Eddie Jackson. Our quarterback has no arm strength. Pedro Goddard, it's only the first turnover of the game. They have nearly double our first downs, but it's still anyone's ball game here in Tuscaloosa. And we actually have one second. That's gonna be the end of the first half though. We're not gonna do anything. We're just gonna just try to survive the rest of the game. Now a word from our sponsor. You enjoy making money? Make some money on FanDuel. You could take every single player in this Alabama lineup and make a fortune on FanDuel using code Bengal at sign up for $20 free. Free $20. You could take Calvin Ridley, Jalen Hurts, Bo Scarborough, all having career days against the Ozark State Outlaws. You can also feel free to check out my second channel where I'm playing Red Dead Redemption again before Red Dead 2 comes out. And my third channel for more videos, more collaborations with your friends, Giraffe Nick, Mark Healy, Not the Expert, Param Crow. The list goes on and on. Check it out. Links in the description. Thank you. Don't hate me for the ad. Sorry. Part of the second half. We're coming off a great Bengus Khan halftime pump up speech for the Outlaws. And guess what? The only thing standing in our way is us. The Outlaws are going to have a duel, okay? They're, we're used to it. We're all right with it. 30 to 7, that's what we call striking distance. We got the best shot in the West. Bo Scarborough gets the handoff, and uh, he's going to manhandle the safety for a few yards there. It's going to be another run. It's actually a read option. Jalen Hurts has room up the middle of the field. No one's going to catch him. 46 yards to the house. For the glorified running back playing quarterback, he's a game manager, all right? There's a reason why they got Tui starting over him in Bama nowadays in 2018. But 2016 Jalen Hurts, he's kind of good. All right, let's find somebody open here. That's wide open over the middle. It's again Gerard Sharp, 25 yards down the field as this Ozark State offense looks dominant. Pedro Goddard. A beast. He's thrown for almost 600 yards just in the first half. And he looks to do the exact same here in the second half. To break the record by a lot. And that is wide open again. Look at Maxwell. This Alabama defense is trash. Get him off the field. Bring in new recruits. And you know what? We're going to call We're gonna call play action swing switch. They're going to think it's another run. And guess what? We're going to find Norman coming around on the wheel. Maybe throw the in coming across the field. We have the wheel. It's Ron Norman. Let's go, baby. Oh, they covered the read option. Not even well at all. But Pedro Goddard is not quite fast enough to run past the defender. He gets him in the backfield. Or from behind, I should say. Was around him in the backfield to make the play. Couldn't quite do it. And this Ozark State offense is having... Clearly, it's best drive of the game. We're going to change this to a run. Just give me good blocks and we have this. Maxwell breaks a tackle. Picks up the first down. That was highly questionable. Oh, my God. We have him. 
Nope, that's not. Okay. It's going to be picked off in the end zone by Brown. We were looking for Ron Norman. The ball obviously not in the best positioning. Kind of a lazy finish there by Ron Norman, but what are you going to do? Um, we unfortunately cannot finish that drive with points, which is going to be tough for uh, beating the Tide now. Is Bo Scarborough going to break a tackle? Pick up nine to match his number. And off again goes to Scarborough. Make a hit. All right, not quite. Oh, no. Tackle him. Dive at his ankles. Thank you. Bo Scarborough picks up 36, which is how old he probably is. That is not a teenager or a 20-year-old. I don't care what it says. I want to see his birth certificate, okay? Got Damian Harris coming in the game. In my opinion, better than Bo Scarborough. He gets the handoff. Okay. He's going to be uh, pretty good on that one. You know what? Bring back Scarborough. He's not averaging 17 per carry. And I get a small sample size. I'm aware of this. They're bringing in Najee Harris as a wide receiver. He's coming back in the backfield. He gets the handoff. Tackle him, Davenport. Damien Harris. Did I say Najee? Did I just change for a second? It's not Najee. I just said Damien. What am I on? Let's try a screen to him. Maybe he just can't run the ball. But can he catch the ball out of the backfield? The answer is a resounding yes. We pick up five yards. Third and three. They got that guy in motion. And we're going to get in the backfield and bring down Scarborough. Look at the fantastic defensive play from the linebacker converging on Scarborough. He's not going to get it. Alabama going to attempt another field goal as we're going to hold him under 400 yards for now. And here is the kick. Jason Bateman again holds as uh, three points go right through the uprights. Tennessee looking like they're going to beat Western Kentucky. You kept it close. Props to them. I'm not getting defensive here, so I don't know what that's trying to uh, insinuate with that graphic. We're going to get offensive, and we're going to win this game. So don't be offended, Nick Saban, when I get you fired Wide open down the field, down the seam. It's Gerard Sharp. 42 yards. And this Alabama Crimson Tide secondary is getting exposed. Pedro Goddard is like the head honcho father on Thanksgiving. Carving up the turkey. As we're going to go, that's not that's not the right move. That's picked off by Holcomb. All right, let's forget what I said. Forget what I said. I thought he was going to do something else. And he did He did not something else. He did that. Oh, it's play action. And O.J. Howard's wide open. But he stepped out of bounds because he's so scared of the pure hit power. The destruction that is in the secondary with the safeties. He avoids the hit and lives to die another day. And trust me, it will happen. That's going to be wide open. There, okay, not quite there. Somebody tackle O.J. Howard, please. 30 yards to the house. Alabama going to take a 54-7 lead pending the extra point. And that is exactly what happens. Talk about a lucky break for Alabama. We're going to come out in a classic four verts. See if we can do something here. And that is pressure and down goes Goddard. That is unfortunate. But you know what? It saves Alabama the embarrassment of giving up a huge play as their secondary collapses. We will punt. Good lord, our punter is terrible. No one can tackle. Oh my god. He's going to stay on his feet. Robert Foster is annoying. We're in coverage. Mullins! It's almost a user pick! The easy reads were in place and Brian Mullins drops it. You're ruining the video, Mullins. Western Kentucky is trying to come back. Really, the storyline here today is not Alabama, Ozark State. It's Western Kentucky versus Tennessee as there are no scores here. I like that. It's nothing, nothing. We're just going to go home. There's no score. We're going to act like it didn't happen. For real, though, what what is going on with the scoreboard? <laughs> what is happening? And we're going to throw that one over the middle. 
It's another noodle arm. Anthony Averd on the interception. We were going for Roland Francisco. And um, I think it's safe to say that Goddard is not capable of throwing the ball over eight yards at a clip in the air. There's still no scoreboard. I guess the operator had a stroke. And, uh, oh no. What is happening? What is going on? Somebody bring him down. Please, he steps out after, I don't know, a thousand yards on that one. Good lord. That's the longest pass in NCAA history. 79 yards. Okay. Alabama is beating us so badly that it has broken the scoreboard. You know, there's still a chance. This is basically a 0 0 ball game. If we keep them out of the end zone and score ourselves, we could win this via scoreboard malfunction. They're going to run the ball. All right, Tennessee beats Western Kentucky 38 28 as they were almost upset. They were on upset alert, upset watch. And um, Western Kentucky could not pull it off for the Sun Belt. Why? Are, just snap the ball. That's over the middle and touchdown. Maybe. It looks like it's a touchdown. They're not putting up any points on the board. I'm not even sure what the score is now. Was it with a 57? Is it 64 to 7? It might be. It also might be 0 0. Could be 28 0. Ozark State over Alabama. I'm down if you guys are. Dude, I'm holding down right trigger. Ron Norman is just... he. Why are you returning kicks? You have like 40 speed. Third down and 15. We were standing strong in the pocket. Evading. Throwing. Alright. We're gonna... We're gonna cut that one, maybe. Here's the handoff. Just wrap him up. That is the ball game. The final score is... Two wins all right and you know what we performed admirably is i think what you could say here i think we performed admirably we were we were great here today and i don't think you'd find anyone disputing that whatsoever 64 to 7 is your final what can you say about a game like today uh things happened i would go as as far as to say things happened not really for Pedro Goddard as a running back or Darren Maxwell as a running back. Really, Pedro Goddard as a runner, I should say. Um, both average a whopping 1.3 yards per carry. Receivers? You know what? Gabriel Timmons showed up. Gerard Sharp showed up. He's a 65 overall. He played like the best player on the field. Gabriel Timmons, the same deal. Blocking. Only let up three sacks. We we're pretty good. No interceptions. We did get a sack. Ron Wilkerson. Couple tackles for loss. Four. I would almost go as far as to say that's several. A deflection from Brian Mullins, which is not a deflection, because no one even came close to making a deflection. It was a dropped user pick. Absolute blasphemy that I did not get that. Winning is something that the 0-1 outlaws are not accustomed. What do you know, all right? Whoever made that headline. Okay. This Outlaws team is as good of a team as you're going to find anywhere. But that is going to do it for episode one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. This was a lot of fun to make. I hope you are as excited for this series as I am. I think that the Ozark State Outlaws can be led to greatness. Just might take some time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next one when we play the West Virginia Mountaineers. Safe haven. Ozark State hopes to rebound in their home opener against West Virginia. And let me tell you, rebound we will. Maybe only in our Hakeem the Dream, Elijah Wan, get a rebound the dreams. <laughs> you guys get it. <laughs> Hilarious. Take it easy.